here we have our giant stinging tree, Dendrochnide excelsa. It's from the family Urticaceae, which is basically the nettle family. And that's what this guy is, a giant nettle with all the distinctive characters as far as its prickly leaves, which sting and burn um, as a tree form. This is one that you don't want to accidentally brush into. It's a good way of discouraging people from randomly wandering in the forest, because if they bump into this, they're certainly gonna know about it. And the pain of the burn, there's some quite horrific stories out there, which for me personally are a little bit overblown, but I don't want you to get stung by this because it is painful, it, it hurts. But um, the stories of, of, there are stories of people dying or from the shock of it. But um, it is, it's anywhere between that end of the spectrum and I've certainly been stung by them plenty. And it's a very hot burn that will be with you for weeks, if not months, um, as you have a shower of, from hot to cold, it breaks open the little glass files, the, the, the glass hairs on the leaves that have got the sting in them. And when those hairs get embedded in your skin, they can stay in your skin for ages. And then when you, your skin moves, they can crack those hairs and you get the irritant. It's the gift that keeps on giving, basically. This is a sort of tree that thrives after disturbance. Like the red cedars, it's a tree that requires uh, an opening in the, in, the, in the canopy and an opening in the ground layer for it to come up. As opposed to the red cedar, this has a fleshy fruit. It's a bit like a mulberry, which are edible if you know what you're doing. And I wouldn't say I know what I'm doing, but there is a bit of it. They can be crisp and fresh, but they can also leave, leave your, your mouth feeling a little bit numb and tingly afterwards. And with the potential of asphyxiation from a hair going off in your throat, it's probably not the thing you should be doing on an everyday basis. But the birds are very good at eating these, dispersing them, and they pop up in the understory. And that's when they're potentially at their most dangerous, when you've got these small plants regenerating um, fast and you could potentially brush against it. But the benefit being to the forest is in those very disturbed open areas, you've got all these nasty prickly leaves that are keeping us and other fauna out of that area so it can heal and the forest can grow back again. And that's basically what they do. Very fast growth, very big leaf, in spite of that prickly leaf to all those larger animals, um, very tasty for a whole range of insects as well that you'll often see holes in the leaves when you're looking at them from below. And there's a whole host of moths that are getting stuck in there and chewing away on the leaves. So a great way of regenerating forest and starting that cycle all over again.